All right. Next up, we are in the Shadow Curse Lands. Uh, the first time you zone into this, you will have a short dialogue with the goblin that you can skip the same way as usual, alternating one and right click. The first thing we're going to want to do when you're starting out is to grab this torch so that you can make your way through the Shadow Curse Lands without getting hit by the curse. There are a lot of different routes that can be used for this area and optimizations are still happening. So this video may have to change in the future. Uh, but for now, the general rule of thumb, the general route is what I will stick to here. So the first thing you want to do is grab a torch and activate it so that you are not going to be hit by the curse when you enter the darker areas. You are still unlinked from Shadowheart. She's no longer necessary for this run. And then you need to make sure you have cast Enhanced Leap and Featherfall on yourself. The first jump, you want to make it to right next to this start of the Shadow Curse. From here, you want to jump as deep into this cursed area as possible. You shouldn't have a problem with your torch but there are some bugs that happen. For example, if you jump over this tree, you will get the Shadow Curse regardless of a torch. If you do enter the Shadow Curse, you can simply turn on, turn on off uh, turn-based mode or and toggle your light source to remove the curse buff. Jump as far in as you can. We're going to make our way down basically to this red little patch of grass. Something to note is these little light areas are safe. For example, if I were to put away my torch, I no longer get the Shadow Curse debuff. There are a few of them throughout here, and you can actually use them if you want. There's one here, one here, and one here, and then there are two up on this bridge. These are generally good places to aim your jumps because even if the torch for some reason is not working, you will avoid the curse in those locations. And for future runs where I believe we will be not grabbing the torch, uh, these spots are incredibly important. So as you jump through, jump to this bridge, make your way here. You can jump from the bridge over this edge to this area. I find it much easier to make this jump here and then just jump into the Shadow Curse. This would be an area where you're cursed. Again, from here, you're going to jump to the edge of this rock, which is another safe spot. So again, if you wanted to put away your torch, you are safe in this spot. From here, we're going to jump down towards Moonrise Towers. There is another safe location here. It may not look it. But by this Shadow Root sack, this is a safe area. From here, we make our way closer to the towers. I need to put my buffs up because I'm going slow. You can either jump along this route, this this tree route, or over to this ruined house and then up towards that wall. I prefer to do the tree route. And then jump right up by this wall to the to the deep curse. After you pass this area, you will be affected by the curse regardless of if your torch is out or not. And we are going to make use of the turn-based mode that happens in order to make it through. So from here, the jump you want to make is to about this area. This will enter you into the Shadow Curse as soon as you land, but it will place you into turn-based mode. The trick here is that damage from the Shadow Curse happens once per turn, so it will not occur again until either you leave turn-based mode 
or if you are not in turn-based mode, it will do a loop of the debuff, and when it hits the end, you will take damage. Some tricks that you can do here, for example, let me show you. Uh, when I exit turn-based mode, you'll see I take the damage immediately. I got lucky, it only rolled two, and you see it's ticking down. I'm gonna show you a trick that I like. So, as it's about to hit, if I enter turn-based mode, this debuff will not trigger now until I exit. So you can use that to extend the duration. If you are out of turn-based mode, wait until the last, make it as far as you can until the last second, then enter turn-based mode, and it won't hit you until you exit. Okay, so now we are back here. I had to reload because showing what I did with the debuff caused a death. I just need to reset. Uh, but back from here, in order to avoid dying, uh, we are here. We want to make sure your buffs are still up. Reapply them if you need to. This is the last area where you will be able to do that safely. From here, again, we jump down to this ledge into the Deep Curse. We will enter turn-based mode, but we will still have a jump because our jump happened before we entered turn-based mode. So from here, you jump to this tip this tip of the rock here. At this point, we need to exit turn-based mode in order to get our jump back, which will cause damage. This is the one area where you are guaranteed to take damage in the run, and unfortunately, it can roll 100% of your health, it seems. I, I was originally under the impression that it only hit for eight damage max, but it seems it can, even on explorer mode, roll 100% of your health. I've yet to figure out if this is a set percentage of health or if there is an amount that will keep you safe. But unfortunately, until we know, there is an RNG, a very small RNG chance of your run ending. So from here, we're going to exit turn-based mode, take that damage, and immediately jump to this ledge. You can also do two jumps, one under this arc and one to here, if you're more comfortable. It's power. This it's strong here. is safe from the curse. You are no longer cursed, and the damage is now done. We are You're back to being able to go a little slower. From here, you have two options. You can either jump in front of this guard, and you'll be given a short dialogue. But recently, we've learned you can just jump this corn over the corner here to avoid dialogue with this zealot and at this point you have a couple options you need to get sent to prison you need to anger this zealot here either by you can attempt to pickpocket if you wanted you can steal a crate which is the tried and true method or i found you can also shoot that uh shoot that uh don't shoot a, pl a person because if you deal damage you go into combat but you can shoot a firebolt at one of these crates and damaging the property will also put you in that dialogue. But for now, we'll just steal. So just make sure you're near this person and steal something where they can see. If you have a defense, make it now. You can do it to any of the crates on the pier as long as this car this patrolling guard is near it. The guard that's stationary does not send you to prison. Only this guard, only the patrolling one does. So acquiesce and can follow no to the prison. This is the place. And that this is, is the Shadow Curse Lands. Most excellent. is falling to the curse. Help them. We're 
close. I can feel it. The absolute. Being arrested. There can be no doubt. This is the place. 